Hello and welcome, welcome to the second episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and to our channel 2020 Flight Simmers. So uh, on today's episode we are going to uh, do a little VOR flying. Um, still going to be in VFR flight rules, uh, we're only going to be about a thousand feet and today uh, we are in Brazil so we're going to be taking off at SETN and uh, there's a little city down here we're going to go check out and then uh, we're going to go to SKCO alright so let's see the destination airport uh, it's only got two runways runway 6 and 24 uh, pattern altitude there is a thousand feet, so we're going to make sure that uh, we're about a thousand feet when we're coming into that area. Uh, the departure area, uh, we're going to be at about 26 feet of elevation, so it's going to be perfect for us. Um, so uh, let's get to it. Uh, today's episode, we're going to work on uh, again some radios. Uh, we didn't talk much about radios in the first episode, so. Let's get on it. Okay, so uh, in this episode, uh, I'm using a couple of scenery liveries. Uh, I'll post them down below in the uh, description. I'm also unit using a um, performance mod, the JP Logistics uh, performance mod and livery, so they'll be down in the uh, description section. Uh, today we're going to be tracking two VORs uh, from one airport to the other airport. Uh, the first VOR we're going to be tracking to that little town that I was talking to you about. Um, let me get the name of it. So it looks like it's a, a protective watershed area. Um, so we're going to head over that way anyway and uh, check that out. So uh, we're going to talk about how to use the radios inside the plane today. So let's get inside here. Alright, so uh, first thing uh, we're going to do got a co-pilot here today and we're gonna just go ahead and make sure that all of our controls are in the out position our flaps are up and we're gonna make sure that we're gonna turn all uh, on our lights properly this time as opposed to last time so let's take a look outside we're flying with live weather today All right, so we checked all that. Let's check our elevators and ailerons and make sure they're working properly. The rudder seems to be good. So let's go ahead and get the battery on, which is right down here. And we can go ahead and flip the alternator on right now. We're also gonna hit the beacon and hit our strobe light. Gonna come down here and hit our fuel cutoff and Put that mixture full forward and crack the throttle just a bit. Hit that primer three times. And I say we're okay to uh, crank it over and get it fired up. Okay. Looks like we're all fired up. Turn on our radios. Now again we have our comm frequencies right over here and our nav frequencies right over here. So I'm going to show you uh, the path that we're going to be taking today. Here's the airport that we're leaving out of and here's the VOR we're going to track. That is uh, 115 Dot seven. And we're going to be tracking that on a course of seven zero. <laughs> so that's what we're going to need to know, and we're going to be tracking that for 49 miles. So what we're going to need to do in our VOR1, there we go, in our nav radio here, let's go and put that uh, VOR frequency of 115.7 uh, right over here. And now we're going to go hit the transfer button 
and that'll pop it in and you'll see uh, we get some pretty little lights light up we light up with nav and uh, so uh, we're good to go now there also uh, is a way that uh, you should check the Morse code on that just to make sure that you've got the right nav frequency um, we're gonna do that in a later episode uh, we're just gonna take it for granted it's a flight simulator and uh, it's gonna be correct so the next thing we need to do in our OBS dial right here is we're going to program the uh, direction that we're going to follow and that would be 70. So let's get that to 70. There we go. Come on. Alright, so we have our radio set up uh, in our nav 1. We're also going to set up the nav 2 dial here. Now the nav 2 Let's bring us back up here again. The VOR for NAV2 is going to be 114, so it's going to be right here. 114. Alright, so we're going to program that into our NAV2 radio. hit that in alright now that will populate down here now we also have a cool little dial down here that we can use okay so we're gonna be tracking that inbound at a course of 11 alright there we go so we're all set up okay so looking at these dials now that we've set in our course that we want to go from the VOR, so that'll be the radial out of the VOR and into the next uh, VOR channel. Um, now we are going to be flying VFR, so we're not going to follow it to the T, but uh, at least we know if we get off track, we'll be able to know where to go. Um, and basically, this little line will tell you in which direction uh, you're off. So we're off of the line to the left, so we would need to fly to the right to get this to come back. Uh, but it's really important to know which direction you're flying to or from that radial because you can get it backwards. And uh, we'll go over that in a more advanced video, but for right now, uh, we're just learning the basics of using the uh, VOR and VOR1 and the VOR2 and uh, using the nav and comm radios. All right, so the next thing that uh, we're going to go ahead and do is hit our nav lights, hit some taxi lights, and go ahead and bring us back to idle. Actually, just get us right around a thousand RPM. And let's get ATC on the horn. Holler ground, and we're going to get a north departure from here. Tack in the ground, Cessna November 489er, Tango Golf ready to taxi north departure. Cessna November 489er, Tango Golf taxi to and hold short of runway 19er via taxiway Alpha. Contact tower on 122 decimal 8 when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 19er via taxiway Alpha Cessna 9er, Tango Golf. Okay, and if anybody has any questions uh, while we're going through this, uh, feel free to go ahead and pop them down below. Uh, so the next thing uh, we want to do is go ahead and turn the transponder on. Uh, and in this country, VFR is 7,000. Uh, we're also going to assume that that's also correct. It's a flight simulator. Uh, but we do need to go ahead and set the altimeter. So let's go ahead and they don't have an ATIS here. Okay, so this is a great learning uh, learning here. So I just told you that the uh, airport that we're at right now is at 26 feet. And a great way to uh, figure out your altimeter setting when you don't have an ATIS is if you know the actual height of the elevation that you're at, you can now program this down to 26 feet. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, and 100. 
So that should be pretty close to uh, what the ATIS uh, is for this area right here. And um, once we get up in the air, you could always call tra air, air, air traffic control and uh, they can give you the ATIS as well. So now that we've got that taken care of, make sure we got brakes on, parking brakes off. Now we're going to go ahead and fly this uh, VOR. Watch out, watch out. Gloomy weather again today. We're going to go ahead and also turn the uh, landing lights on. And uh, while we're at it, hit the pedo. Because we're here. Get the taxi lights off. Let's get tower on the horn. Tacking to tower Cessna November 489er Tango Golf ready for north departure at runway 19er. Cessna November 489er Tango Golf altimeter 29er decimal 80 wind 258 at 15. North departure approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 19er. Okay, so we're cleared for takeoff. Let's acknowledge that. Cleared for takeoff runway 19er Cessna Niner Tango Golf. I don't think we have much of any lights in here. So we're going to uh, backtrack down the runway a little bit. have some wind here today, so we'll see. Yep, wind 258 at 15. Okay, so they did give me a uh, altimeter. 2980, let's see how close I am. Look at that. I was .01 off. See, so that's a great way to uh, figure out your altimeter if uh, you don't know the uh, ATIS information. Okay, let's get down here. Alright. Whoa, 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 whoa. Alright, we're gonna swing us around here. Okay, so we do have a nasty crosswind, if you can uh, see that windsock right there. Alright, <clears throat> good thing that uh, we're using VORs today. So we're not going to do a run-up today. We're going to go ahead and put our flaps down. Taxi lights are still on. You ready, Bob? Nothing's in the back. This guy's not looking too pretty today. All right. We're going to gently ease on the throttle. Make sure that uh, we're in takeoff position down here. And gently ease off the throttle. Now with that crosswind blowing at us, we're going to really be giving it a lot of left rudder. Because that wind is going to want to hit. And you also want to make sure that you're turning into the wind. Alright, we hit 60. Let's get it up. Remember, don't pull off of the uh, flaps yet. Just leave them full. Now what's going to happen is, we keep flying this direction, this is going to switch. So 
so we're just going to keep flying in this direction here until we get to the right. There, just switched. Attack in a tower Cessna November. See, it just switched. Tango Golf, continue for north departure. All right. So I know we're going to be going at a course of seven zero, and I need to get over some. So I'm going to go for a course of uh, five zero. And now that we've over 500 feet, I'm going to bring our flaps up all the way. Still at full throttle. And we're going to use the trim wheel now down here to start trimming us up. And as you see, our needle's starting to come in to uh, come to center here. So now we're going to start our turn into that, and we know we're at 7-0 is the course, so we're just parallel to our course right now. So we're going to turn here a little bit uh, to 6-0. Uh, until uh, our needle comes centered on us. Alright, and if you see the bottom VOR, so that one is tracking now. So once we're at the point of intersection, these two will come in alignment. And you'll see what I'm talking about. This one should align with this one uh, at a particular point, and that's where we're going to then follow this VOR into our next uh, airport. And we're going to try to maintain uh, our altitude here between uh, 1,000 and 1,500 feet. Not sure how to get rid of this guy. Tango Golf, leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Attack in a tower Cessna November 489er Tango Golf frequency change. All right, we're off course a little bit here. That's okay because this is a VFR flight. We're actually going to go down a little bit. We can pull out some throttle now. We don't need to be going that fast. So the total trip on this uh, flight here is about, uh, I believe, 70 miles. So it's not going to be that long of a flight. And again, this is just to kind of get the hang of uh, using these VORs. Uh, and this is VOR1 and VOR2. And show you a little bit of how they work. Again, we're not going to go too in-depth on these. Um, we will in a later episode. All right, so I'm also going to turn the landing lights off right now. You probably still want to keep those on if you're really flying, especially in this kind of weather. But we have all of our other lights on. Pedo heat's on. Let's just do a quick check. Car heat's okay. Get our temperature, oil pressure's good. We're still climbing a little bit, so we're going to go ahead and trim us down some. Just slightly. And then we're going to come back to a course of 7-0 now. As you can see that uh, we've lined back up on our VOR1. Alright. Perfect go down a little bit more we can pull a little bit of throttle out that'll also help us go down some let's take a look outside
Now, if you want to get a better view of just uh, where we are here, so we're going to be tracking up this uh, way right here, right up the coast. We're going to be intercepting that second radial right here. So once we hit here, we'll intercept and then take the second VOR right into our airport right here. And uh, we'll also get on the horn with ATC to get uh, permission to land. So looking out to our right, it looks like we got some people. That's what's cool about Microsoft Flight Simulator, that uh, you can really fly with anybody. Again, if anybody has questions about uh, the gauges or how to use them, uh, just put, post them down in the comments below, and uh, I'll get to you. And really, we don't need to change any of these because we already set everything up uh, while we were on land. That makes a, a huge difference when you do that. This way, while you're up in the air, you can just fly and not have to worry. Pull a little bit of throttle out still. We're going to leave us at uh, full rich, uh, only because we're only about uh, 2,000 feet in the air. So, uh, if we were going a little bit higher, maybe three or 4,000, we would then start to pull out on the mixture a little bit. And um, we'll get into that uh, engine management in a future video. Right now, we're just here to take in the scenery of Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you just heard, I just took out a throttle a little bit. I'm also always constantly watching the gauges, uh, seeing which way we're heading. This is our attitude indicator. See, we're a little bit low. Shows that we're in a downward position. And this also confirms that we are going down that's fine because I want to get a little bit lower and all I had to do was take out some throttle and that put us downward we're still maintaining a hundred knots fuel check plenty of fuel everything is good ADF we can turn the ADF on we'll be using this in a uh, future video how to use the ADF. It's not as precise as your uh, VORs, but uh, it works quite well. All right, so I just gave a little bit more throttle this way we can uh, pick speed up a little bit. And just by giving that little bit of throttle, you can see I can control the uh, altitude just with the throttle and we're still maintaining. So once you get it trimmed out really well with your uh, trim wheel right here, then all it takes is a little bit of throttle or a little less throttle. Closer you get to the ground, we're going to get a lot of wind off the water here, so I wouldn't be surprised if you're going to see this needle going up and down. And again, I'd want to keep it at least a thousand feet. Now flying VFR, it's really nice when you can fly on the coast like this. This way you can actually see where you are. When you're inland flying, uh, so you got a lot of mountains in here. And if we would be going that way, I bet you it's raining over here. Uh, it looks to be raining. And we may run into some rain uh, once we get up this way. So uh, we'll see. Time will tell. Got plenty of fuel. So we're good to go. And it looks like we're about uh, 1,250 feet, somewhere around there. So we're going to keep tracking this uh, VOR right now until we get uh, close to that wetland area. I believe that's what it is. Uh, we'll see. All right, so uh, I'm going to track this VOR all the way uh, until we intercept. And uh, we will... Uh, come back at you once we get to that intercept point and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. 
All right, everyone. So we're getting ready to come up on our waypoint here. And uh, before we do that, we're going to check and make sure this second VOR that we're going to be tracking is the correct VOR. So I got the Morse code uh, that I brought up. I'll show you right here. Anyway, if you know how to read Morse code, there it is right there. So we're going to verify that right now. Um, and how you do that is uh, pretty simple. You come over here. We're going to be checking our NAV2 source. So we're going to hit NAV2 at the top. And we're going to hit the identify button right there. Now you're going to listen. Okay. So that identifies that as being the correct VOR that we wanted to track. So that way we know that uh, once these do come in alignment here, which will be very, very shortly, uh, that we know that this VOR that we're tracking is the correct one. And we're going to be tracking that at a radial of 14 degrees. Alright, and um, we should be coming up on that uh, pretty soon. So let's see what, what happens here. Keep an eye on these two dials right here. We do have a little wind uh, coming out of the west at about 7 knots, so it's pushing us a little bit, but not too much. And uh, the same process goes for uh, the, the NAV1 radio. If you want to check that, uh, all you got to do is go ahead and hit NAV1, hit the IDEN, and it will uh, give you the code. And as you can tell, it's a completely different Morse code than the other one. So we go ahead and hit that NAV button again. Now, what I can do is I know the uh, air traffic, the ATC tower, which is 1181. So we can go ahead and set this in right here to 1181. Hopefully, they're using the correct codes. one and we go ahead and hit swap now we should be uh, coming up here very shortly and you should see these uh, intersect each other and we will then be tracking VOR2 inbound to our arrival airport our destination airport uh, SKCO right around a thousand feet, just a hair over a thousand feet here. Oh, I'm sorry, we're holding just under a thousand feet, holding at 900 feet right now. It looks like uh, we might be coming into some rain up here, I'm not sure. Clouds are breaking a little bit, so hopefully uh, we'll have some good weather coming in. Also, you'll notice on the dial here, there's a little arrow uh, right here and right here. So this arrow means that the VOR we're tracking is behind us, and this arrow means that the VOR we're tracking is in front of us. That will make a big difference because if you're tracking a VOR, you can be on the same path. And if this is behind you, say you have the opposite in here, and it's behind you, this will also be opposite. So if this is over here, you're not going to want to go right, you're going to want to go left. 
So that's why it's important to know the direction that you're flying. You need to find that out first. We'll talk about that in a more advanced episode. But we know that this is too because we programmed all this before we left the ground. It's very important that if you can do any of this beforehand that you do, so you're not fumbling around in the air. And it looks like this is starting to turn a little bit. We're coming off course just a hair. We're still maintaining about a hundred knots. We did lean it out just a touch, and that brought our RPMs up just a hair. That lets us know that we're operating at a good RPM, good mixture. If you lean it out too much, what will happen is uh, your RPMs will go down at a certain point, and uh, the engine will get very hot and you could cause damage, especially if you have damage turned on in the simulator, which I do. So I don't want to do that. Now, you can see right down here, we're doing exactly as it's supposed to. The VOR is coming into play here. And we know we're going to be tracking uh, 14 degrees uh, on the radial. Now we can uh, start coming left because we know this is 14 degrees that we're going to be following. So we need to get somewhat close to 14 degrees, otherwise we're going to overshoot that radial. And you'll see what I mean just in one moment. Because we have this set right here at 14 degrees. We want to get us close to 14 degrees there. Otherwise, uh, we will overshoot this radial and then we'll have to uh, get it back in alignment. almost got straight on here so now we're going to bring this to uh, 14 degrees or thereabouts because we are getting blown here from the west so you will have to compensate Okay, so we are now tracking our second VOR, which is right down here, and we're going to track this all the way into the airport uh, that we're heading to today. So it looks like we're getting some nasty weather up in front of us. I'm going to go ahead and turn the landing lights on. Just uh, No, we'll keep them off. We'll keep the landing lights off. There's nobody out here. But you can see we've got some rain hitting the windshield here. side windows. One thing about this little Cessna 152, it does amazingly well once you have everything trimmed right. You don't even need to touch the controls. Look, I'm not even touching anything. And it holds us pretty, pretty steady. You don't have an autopilot, but if you can read dials, um, get there. So 
So let's see if uh, we can get the ATC up here. SKCO, that's where we're going. So we're going to ask for a full Bob stop landing. November, and we're a little Tango far Gulf, out, 30 miles. miles. Usually feet you land. don't want to do that until you're about 15 miles out. Cessna November, 489 Tango Golf, Moth Mar, the tower. Altimeter, 290 decimal, 78.283 at 13. Into left downwind, runway 24. Okay, so we're going downwind. Enter left downwind, runway 24. Enter left traffic, runway 24, Cessna Niner, Tango Golf. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I know that runway is heading 237. Uh, hitting a little bit of wind here. So what I'm going to do is program my VOR1 now to the same as what my VOR2 is. Let's get over here. So that is 114 on the dot. Okay. Now they want us to come in runway 22, left downwind runway 22. So I'm going to bring this up right here. So we're going to be coming right in here and we're going to be coming in this way. So here's what we're going to do. You can see this little VOR right here is right next to the runway. That's going to get us close enough. Runway heading is 237. So we're going to have a 237 heading to this VOR. Should put us parallel to that runway. So if we do hit some weather, that should uh, be able to get us in. So we're going to program this to 237. I do like this plane because you can have multiple uh, courses set on these two different VORs, so it makes it really, really nice. Okay, so we know where we're tracking. This will get us right on runway heading right here once we get closer. So I'll show you how we're going to use that uh, once we get a little closer. We need to get back on course though. This plane does not have any anti-ice, so you don't want to be going in any conditions that uh, you could have icing. And we don't today. It's uh, fairly warm out, and we're not too high. If we were a little higher, I bet you believe it, this would all be ice. So, we're right around a thousand feet now. And we're going to keep tracking right where we are until we get this back centered again. This should track us right to the airport. So, now that we're in track to the airport, uh, we'll meet back up again once we get a little bit closer. All right, so as we get a little bit closer here, uh, one thing we want to enter in is our altimeter, which is uh, 2978. So we need to enter that in for our destination airport not far off of where we are now, but we just need to make sure we get that in. Now, if you don't know how to get there, you could always ask ATC uh, where to turn you. Uh, again, you're going to have to tell them where you are. They're going to give you a squawk code, and um, this way they can get you uh, close to the airport. Well, right now, you can see that we're tracking fairly well. We're a little off course, just a little bit. Still maintaining uh, just over a thousand feet. And I believe we're within about 10 miles or so from the uh, airport now. like. And we're 
getting off course just a little bit, but that's okay. As long as we know we're close. And we're getting bopped all over the place right now from the wind. That uh, must be some pretty good gusts. It says we have eight knot winds right now, but uh, these clouds... I don't know. You can really see it popping up and down there. Now, if you're joining us for the first time and you missed out on our episode one, I'll go ahead and put a link to that up above right now. And uh, just click on that, and you can learn all the basics to getting this thing started and uh, doing a basic orientation flight. Uh, basically, it would just be a pattern. Uh, flight, we're going to take off, come around, and land the, land the plane. So I think our next episode, uh, episode 3, we may actually use this for an instrument landing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, do that. We'll also have to set up an IFR flight in a Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we might go ahead and show you how to do that as well. If you have any questions on any of that, go ahead and pop them down below. And while you're watching, give us a thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the content and want to see more of it. out today but at least we're uh, taking and we're right below these clouds wow look at that now just to let you know the graphics settings I believe I showed everybody that in episode one but uh, we're at uh, and everything is pretty much on high with the exception of a couple things I've got turned off like bloom and some things I don't really need depth of field blur and all that stuff. Wow. Now mind you, we have no autopilot here and I don't even have to touch the controls. Uh, we're staying pretty pretty well straight, I would say. bit here. I wasn't watching that. That's the only thing uh, with this one is you do have to watch and make sure you're going the right direction. It'll keep you pretty leveled off. So I'm just looking over to the side here. And uh, let's show you uh, just about how far we are. So there we are. And there's where we're landing. It should be a pretty runway right there on the water. We'll fly over this town here on our way in. And uh, I really want to show you what I'm talking about with the uh, VORs. So I'm going to show you how you can get very confused uh, with the VORs. Now as you remember, we uh, program this and it shows that uh, we're going, well it shows that the VOR is behind us. Here's where it can get confusing. The VOR is not behind us, it's in front of us. So if you don't really pay attention to this and you see your line right here, your first instinct is, well I need to go right to get this to come in. To alignment but you'd be completely backwards and you will never get it to come in alignment if you go right you need to go left because we know that we're going to be coming this way 
from up here down tracking down so once we get up to near runway 22 this will then show that we're going to be tracking towards it so that's how you can get very very confused so I'm going to show you right now and we're going to track runway heading but now we're going to be using this VOR instead we're close enough that we can do this and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about Right, I can keep tracking this direction. Now you're going to see this VOR go off and you're going to say, oh my god, you went left. You'll never get to here. Keep in mind, this thinks the VOR is behind us when it's in front of us. It's very important you know the direction that you're going or where you are in relation to the VOR that you're tracking because this is what I'm going to show you right now is how you can get severely lost. So we're at about 1,500 feet. And I'm just going to bring this up one more time. So you see that we have now penetrated Delta airspace and uh, that goes up to 3,000 feet, so 0 to 3,000. And we are sitting at uh, 1,500, 1,600 feet, so... We are right within their airspace now. But the whole point of this is I want to show you how you can get the VORs messed up. So if you thought you were confused before, now you'll really be confused. Now they gave us instructions to enter left traffic uh, for runway 24. So we're going to track the runway right here with this. And then uh, we're just going to make sure that we come parallel to it so we are in uh, left traffic. Now when they say left traffic, uh, what that means is that the traffic pattern that you're going to be using is always going to be left hand turns on runway 24 direction. So, I'm going to bring this up again. We know our runway is this way. That means everything is going to be left-hand turns, no matter which way. If they said use number 6, or was this not what, yes, 6, then in left-hand turns, you're going to be always going left-hand turns. Okay, look what just happened here. So I know tracking 237 is what this is. We're going to go a little bit past that because we overshot slightly. So 237 is down here. We're going the opposite direction. So now what you're going to see is this coming back and we went right. Now when we pass this VOR, you're going to see that uh, this will then start flipping the other direction and show that we're going to it. Right now it thinks it's behind us still. And we're going to come right where we're shooting it. And if we look out our window right here, there it is. So, we are left traffic, right there is our runway that we're going to be landing on. We're going to go ahead and start slowing down now, get us down to about 80 knots, and mine the trim wheel, and we want to get us down to near uh, 1,000 feet so that we can be near uh, pattern altitude. So now just keep an eye on this right here because this is going to flip as soon as, there we go. We are now 
on the other side of it. Once we turn around, this will actually be reading right and we'll be going to it. Clear to land runway 24. Clear to land runway 24 Cessna Niner Tango Golf. So we're still trying to bleed off some speed and bleed off some altitude right here. We've uh, passed where we need to go, so we're going to go ahead and uh, turn out a little bit. The reason for that is because if we try to make a turn as close as we were to the runway, we're going to wind up overshooting. Now we're coming up to around our 1,000 feet mark, so that's pattern altitude. We should be far enough away. We're going to go ahead and start our turn in. Bring us, and we're going to add our one layer of flap. Now you're going to see this will be correct now once we uh, get back around here. Still trying to maintain. Not come down too fast, so we want to get that trim up some. I'm going to enter our second layer of flap here. And adding a little bit of throttle and full on the mixture now. And we should be coming up to us soon. So there we are, right over here. I'm going to go ahead and get us trimmed out. So now we're going to the VOR. And we're now want to go to the right so that we can get this in alignment here. Dropping speed a little bit. We're not at full throp, flap yet. We're at uh, 20 degree flaps. Probably don't need 20 yet, so we're just going to go back up to 10. And notice our speed is increasing now that we went to 10. And also take a look at our VOR right here. Alright, so we're going to flip on our landing lights. We can bring us back, lower us down again with flap, and you need to compensate for that because the plane is going to want to pop up in the front. Reducing throttle now. And notice we are right on where we need to be. That VOR is just off to the left hand side. Bring back throttle most of the way. Just cracked out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and apply our last stage of flap. That's going to get us down to our approach speeds. see our speed has bled off to we're right about where we need to be on our approach. Now we're just going to glide down until we touch. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and put full flaps up. And we have now touched down at our destination. Alright, I want to thank everybody for watching the video today. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so uh, yet. If you made it this far through the video, I want to thank you for watching through the whole thing. If you have any questions, uh, comments, concerns, pop them down below. And uh, as always, we'll see you on the next one. Keep the blue side up.